everybody who sells drugs ends up dead or in jail. If, if we, if we are forever talking about um, the problem, the, I mean, the, let's see, what they're doing, how are we changing it? You know what I'm saying? My thing is, let's talk to people. Let's talk to our people. Let's talk to people who are poor or, and, and a lot of times poor people are unintelligent. They don't understand what's going on and therefore they fall for these things you know i mean something that i never understood growing up is i mean i had an understanding of it but being a young african-american uh, uh girl uh part african-american uh girl growing up in the hood it, it's not the norm for you to understand what's going on and but I understood something. I didn't want to have a boyfriend who sold drugs. I didn't understand why men and, and boys, like the ambition was as soon as I grow up, I'm going to sell drugs. Like I, I just wanted to talk to them and, and find out, understand like, why is it that you want to do this thing? And as far as I can see, and at this time, I'm about, at this point, I'm about 16 years old. As far as I can see, from the time I was a little bitty girl, I mean, two, three years old. And so it's, it's a dead end. It's a dead end. It's, it's, it, there's nothing there. But I feel like um, I was blessed because I was taken out of the hood um, and I was brought to the suburban parts of um, the DMV area. And so... I saw something else. I saw that there was another life I could have. I was, I'm also a reader. And so when I read, I believed some of the fairy tales that, you know, I read. Like, you know, I, I believed that there was another life. There was a love story, um, a happy ending for me, so to speak. And so, you know, I, I realized that a lot of families growing up poor or growing up in the hood, they don't you know, teach their children to, you know, read after school rather than, you know, just running around playing or um, watching television. But we were poor, you know, it's not that my family was better. It was, we were poor. So we didn't have, we didn't even have cable. I never saw cable. Everybody around us had cable, but we never saw cable until we were adults and we were able to try cable. Now, I could care less about cable. I don't watch cable. It's like annoying to me because, you know, I just like to watch what I want to watch. And so I'm the type of person that would rather go if I was going to watch a movie, just pick it out, you know. But it's just funny how you don't have things growing up and you want it so bad and you get older and now you don't, you have no need for it. Um, but yeah, so we read all the time because there was nothing else, you know, and my grandmother happened to be highly intelligent and so did my mom. And, and so we, I mean, as far as reading and writing and spelling and we're all writers in my family and yeah, that's just the way we grew up. We just love the written word and being that way, I guess I just knew that there was something else for me, you know, because I read all the time. And my favorite story, I used to read a lot of fiction. I'm so into nonfiction now, but I used to read a lot of fiction and I always thought that there was something better for me beyond the hood over there, you know, in Washington, D.C. And so I realized that some of these young men and women, they don't know that there's something else beyond the hood. And I mean, I've even spoken with friends who are still there and they wonder why I left and when am I coming back? And going back, it's, it's so much bigger than what they understand, I believe. I believe that they don't realize that if, if I were to go back, then I would be going back mentally as well. And excuse me, they may be going through problems that they don't realize that once you get out, you know, of that environment, you, first of all, you get out in your mind 
And then once you get out in your mind, you're not going to want to stay in that environment anymore. That's what happens. It's like if your mind changes, you cannot feel comfortable. I mean, it can happen anywhere. It doesn't have to be there. You know, I've lived in different neighborhoods and man, I, I've had rich friends who, um, I found out, you know, the rich, they had their party time too, but I don't feel comfortable in that environment drinking and, 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 and all of that kind of stuff because it's not who I am. I've changed. So I don't fit that environment anymore. So I will never go back because to go back, I would have to go back to being who I used to be. And I don't want to be who I used to be because she was lost and she was hopeless she had no you know future like i mean even though i saw what i saw i was blessed to come out of the hood and see what i saw that you know there were other opportunities and i could live in the suburb suburbs and in a suburban area and um and, and and get a decent job and just you know just live differently and not wake up smelling a garbage can in your backyard every morning because the garbage uh dumpster was right there in our yard um and just piles and piles of trash in the alley alleyway you know that's what we played on the trash pile sometimes just, even though i knew those things i didn't know how to get out so in the very beginning of my life, I just, um, uh, of my life as an adult, I went around in circles. I met a man and, you know, we got together and we started having children. And, and so I wanted out, but I kept doing the same things that my parents did before me and my grandparents did before my parents, you know? So it's like, you're in a cycle, you want to be out, but you don't know how to get out, you know? So I understand that. So my thing is, yeah, I, I always, I never, for a while, I, I, I should say, I didn't understand, like, why does every young boy in the hood, I don't care what color you are, it's just like, if you're in the hood, you don't, I guess there's a hopelessness, because when I was young, I did see that. I was very young, and I remember, uh, realizing as I looked in the face of faces of adults, you know, I was somewhere between five and eight years old and I just cried because I saw they were hopeless. They were all hopeless. They didn't have any hope in their faces. And I did, I knew that there was something else for me, you know, and it just, it makes me want to cry right now because I knew that I, there was a way out. And I don't know, like, why was I blessed to understand that there was something else? I didn't know how to obtain it. You know, I went through hell, you know, um, I didn't really change my life or it's even, uh, really, I didn't really start knowing where the tools were that could, that I needed and start gathering those tools to change myself and my life and my future until 1997, which I was 27 years old. But from the time I was a little girl and I read fairy tales, I understood. And I also was blessed to have my father take me out of the hood. And I saw something different and I said, yeah, this is not just books. This is not just, um, uh, you know, June Cleaver and Leave It to Beaver, you know, that kind of thing. Like, this is something that I can have for myself. There is another life for me uh, beyond the hood. And they didn't know that. And when I was young, I didn't understand at all because I didn't know that other families were not like my family. I thought that everybody read books all the time. I thought that every family came together and grandma read to them the way that grandma read to us and she sang to us and we would learn different songs. And I mean, we were big kids, you know, like eight, nine, 10, 11 years old, but we just enjoyed listening to little stupid songs like how much is that doggy in the window and you know, things like that. I mean, they were not biblical songs all the time either, but they, they were not vulgar. And um, 
mother goose mother goose nursery rhymes they were not really good for you but they built a foundation in me of of that gave me a love for words and a love for poetry you know mother goose is i have to say it was like the reason why i ended up loving poetry so much